began as a revolution aimed at overthrowing a political dynasty. Which became a civil war that has turned Syria into an international battleground. A conflict in which the saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, doesn't hold true. With so much crossfire, the fog of war is thicker than ever. Front lines have cut the country into pieces. The regime of Bashar al-Assad, allied with Lebanese Hezbollah forces, controls much of the West, while opposition forces like the Free Syrian Army and groups like Jabhat Fatah al-Sham, which recently announced its split from al-Qaeda, have pockets of control. The Northeast is held by YPG-dominated Syrian Democratic forces, and Daesh controls much of the heartland. Backing all these forces are international powers, each with their own agenda, creating a dizzying network of alliances. Daesh is a common enemy. But missing from this complicated picture are civilians who can't escape. What more can we say about the plight of the people in Syria other than the level of despair has reached unprecedented levels? For civilians in Syria, life is a daily struggle to not become a statistic. After five years of war, the eyes of the world now glaze over daily images of horror. With few exceptions, moments in time captured to remind the world of a daily onslaught of human life and the danger of trying to escape it. Three years ago, the US appeared on the brink of intervening against the Assad regime. Accused of a sarin gas attack in a Damascus suburb, Obama had already drawn a line in the sand over the use of chemical weapons. A red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. But ultimately, the math didn't add up. An international investigation made no conclusions about who carried out the attack. Now, a new report says the Syrian regime has used chlorine gas bombs against civilians at least twice over the past two years. But the U.S. has turned its attention away from the Assad regime and towards Daesh. And with the Syrian government protected by Russia, which sits on the UN Security Council, international action against the Assad regime appears as dubious as ever. With each passing diplomatic offensive, on the ground, the fruition of international efforts are hard to see. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov are in Geneva to again discuss a path to peace. But the rebels, who the U.S. support, want to see Assad go. And the Syrian regime, backed by Russia, says Assad's future is not up for discussion. There has been some progress made in the form of temporary ceasefires to allow delivery of humanitarian aid to those trapped in the fighting. Under a new deal, rebels and civilians are being evacuated from Duraya, a southern suburb of Damascus, which has been besieged for years. And in Syria's second city, Aleppo, a four-year fight between pro-regime forces, including Russia and Syrian rebels, may be halted for aid deliveries. But the pause is likely to be only that. And while Russia has helped the Syrian regime gain ground, the fight for Syria is as fragmented as ever. And for civilians, the suffocating prospect of being trapped in a homeland that's being destroyed beyond recognition. Randolph Nogel, The Newsmakers.